Okay, welcome. This lesson is going to discuss how we can take a distributed load, like what we have here on a beam, and reinterpret it in terms of nodal forces and nodal moments. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So if we go ahead and first think about why do we even care? Why do we try to do this? And the reason is because loads can only be applied at nodes when we're talking about finite element analysis. So if this is our element, there's a node, it's okay to apply forces and moments there. And over there, same thing, also okay. Inside the element, we can't apply anything. So that's why we need to have work equivalent loading to reinterpret these distributed loads. All right, so first thing we think about when we think about splitting up loads is, well, just dividing it. And so that could be taking this distributed load that we have here and then just taking half the load and throwing it on one side and then half the load and throwing it on the other side, right? WL would be the total load, half on the left, half on the right. And that actually works out okay. It's called static equivalency, but it takes time to converge. It needs to converge. And so for an example, let's go ahead and show this, which is just an even distributed load case. And we'll go ahead and do a little convergence plot over here. So this dotted line is the actual peak displacement for this distributed load if we were using mechanics of materials equations. And here we'll go ahead and use our static equivalent load. And we'll see that just two elements, it actually underestimates by 20%. It's kind of a lot. But if we use more elements, you can see the more elements that we use, the more little teeny tiny forces, the more it resembles our distributed load so we get a little bit closer with four elements at five percent go ahead and use six elements we get a little bit closer only two percent off and then finally you know with i think we have eight elements is the last version that we have and we're only one percent off so it's okay but it just takes time to converge so what we're going to do now is introduce what work equivalent loading looks like and so to start, we're going to go ahead and look at what work is and has a lot of similarities with potential energy, especially for a spring, which is the example that we're going to go ahead and show here. Work is one half force times displacement and you might be familiar with that equation for a spring. A lot of times that force is uh, reinterpreted as the stiffness times displacement. So you might remember that one half kx squared or k times displacement squared for a spring. So that same type of idea is what we're applying here, except we're applying it to, well, a distributed load, and then we're going to go ahead and also apply it to uh, finite elements analysis interpretation of an element, and we're going to go ahead and set it equal to come up with our new loads. So here's the original beam with a distributed load, some generic distributed load, arbitrary distributed load applied over the top, and this is what our displacement could look like. These are just drawn in what the default positive directions would be going up. And so there's our variable load. Once again, that's our variable displacement. And previously we just had uh, a scalar equation, but or a discrete equation. But here, since we have variable load and variable displacement, we would actually need an integral to determine the work across this whole beam. Okay, so that's for a distributed load. But we also want to figure out, well, what is it for our element, right? At the end of the day, we want to be able to figure out what nodal loads we can apply to this. And we have the option of our lateral forces, pardon me, my transverse forces, and we have our moments at each node. So those are the options we have. And you'll notice here we also have our corresponding displacements on either node and our corresponding rotations at either node. Okay, so all of these are drawn in the positive direction as well. And you'll notice here we still have our same discrete style of equation for work, except we just have it at each degree of freedom. So we have four various degrees of freedom. And so we have that one half force times displacement at the left node and at the right node. And then we can also do that with our moments. We have one half moment times rotation at the left node and one half moment times rotation at the right node. And so now all we do is we just set those equations equal to each other because we want to find our work equivalent loading. And so we start with our distributed load and our equation for our distributed load. And we say that is what our work is equal to. And now we go ahead and set it equal to what 
our finite element representation of the beam element is with our nodal forces and moments on either side and we just set it equal to the discrete equation that we had from that previous slide okay now the important thing to note is that our distributed pardon me our, our displacement equation right that can actually be written in terms of our shape functions and nodal degrees of freedom or nodal movements right so we have our nodal displacement at, at the left side our nodal rotation at the left side nodal displacement at the right side nodal rotation at the right side and if we go ahead and make this substitution that allows us to see now we can start comparing different aspects of this equation right now we can start seeing oh, okay this shape function corresponds with this portion of the work equation for our finite element analysis version of the beam element and same thing for theta i same thing for our displacement on the right end same thing for our rotation on the right end all right so now we're just going to go ahead and do some more solving as the title there describes and so taking what we had from the previous slide making that substitution for our displacement v of x which we have over here in terms of our individual shape functions and the corresponding nodal displacements and rotations and so we're just going to go ahead and split these up into the four separate components now there we go we'll just do like that for the last one and now we'll go back to what we had for our nodal pardon me our work equation for the finite element and there we go there are the four aspects there and all we do to figure out what our distributed pardon me our work equivalent loads are right for yi mi yj mj these are going to be the nodal loads well we just go ahead and compare the different aspects of the equation right so this portion corresponds with this portion for the displacement at the left end similarly we get our rotation at the left end we have our displacement on the right end and a rotation at the right end so we just compare each of those aspects and by doing that we finally get to our work equivalent nodal load equations all right there's our arbitrary distributed load and here are our work equivalent loads that we have for our finite element and we can see that our force at the left end our lateral force our transverse force at the left end can be written in terms of our distributed load and the shape function for the left end we got something similar for our moment at the left end our displacement or pardon me, our, our lateral load, our transverse load at the right end, and our moment at the right end. And for reference, these are our shape functions one through four. This is our shape function for the uh, displacement at node one. This is our shape function for the rotation at node one. This is our shape function for the displacement at node two. And this is our shape function for the rotation at that right end. So these are our general equations, but Possibly more useful is what some common solutions are for these work equivalent loads. And so we'll go ahead and start with a nice even distributed load at top. And go ahead and see this is what our possible loads can be, right? All we have is the option of two transverse forces and two moments. And it starts with something similar to static equivalency. We just go ahead and divide that load up by two, half on the left, half on the right. But notice the addition of moments. We'll have these moments, and these moments are not accounted for when we just use regular static equivalency. Okay, so that's a very common one. Another variation is, or another very common type of load is our triangular type distribution. And so if we have that, and we use the equations from the previous slide, to find our nodal forces and moments, we would end up getting the following. So we go ahead and have some lateral forces there and some moments. Okay, now we'll go ahead and see, is this effective? Is it efficient? Is it any better than static equivalency? And so this example is meant to show how it is a little bit better. So let's go ahead and start with a general just distributed load type problems. So this is just from mechanics and materials, right? We just have a distributed load across the length of a beam. And the max displacement predicted by mechanics and materials equation is minus 5 
distributed load W times the length to the fourth divided by 24 times the elastic modulus E times the area moment of inertia I, all in the denominator there. And what's the percent error? None, because it's the theoretical solution. Great. Okay, so now we're going to go see what our static equivalent ver variation is for two elements. So you can see here it is using those equations from the left side. All right, and since we do have two elements, each having length L over 2, this form is a little bit different, right? So we have WL over 4, but that's because, well, the length is L over 2, not L. So we have that on the left side. We have the same on the right side. We double it in the middle because there's contribution from the left element and the right element. So it would be WL over 4 plus WL over 4. That's what give us, gives us that load there in the middle. And so it predicts a max displacement of WL to the 4th over 6EI, which is an error of 20%. All right, we saw that from before. Let's go ahead and take a look at our work equivalent variation. And so here is our work equivalent loading. Note that the difference is now we have the addition of these moments on either end. See, in the static equivalent loading, yeah, this load gets distributed, but it's, it's like right over the top of a pin support. So it can't really do anything. Here, we have the same situation, but these moments that are applied at those pin supports sure can do something. And we'll notice that if you went ahead and solved through using the work equivalent equations that we had on the previous slide, we get the exact same solution as from mechanics and materials theory. Okay, so now we'll, we'll go ahead and finish off with some reflection questions. The first is, what type of nodal load does work equivalent loading include, but static equivalent loading does not. And our next reflection question is, how could one determine the work equivalent nodal loads if we have a trapezoidal type of load distribution? And so trapezoidal load type of distribution, it's linearly distributed, and we have one value of the distributed load at one end and a different value at the other end. And that should conclude our video on work equivalent loading.